whether you're vegan or non-vegan, you're gonna wanna know what these people got up to. Circle of life. Delicious. This is definitely humane. I, I can sleep well. I want them tested. The privilege to use laboratory animals. Hey guys, so today we're going to get into the many deceptions perpetrated by the Kenya study researchers themselves. I've done two previous videos on the Kenya study, but those videos focused on the failings of the journalists, so they're not really required viewing for this one, but if you want to go check them out first, do so. But all you really need to know is that the Kenya study is an intervention study which was funded by the US beef industry, which purportedly sought to assess the health impacts of various diets on the development of children. So without further ado, let's look at the five main problems with the Kenya study. Problem one, the researchers deliberately misrepresented past studies to create an apparent foundation for their anti-vegetarian slash anti-vegan narrative. I believe it was Gandhi who said, I'd rather eat my own arm than go vegetarian. Take this quotation from the Kenya study researchers, for example. In affluent countries, strict vegetarian diets and fear of red meat dictated by spiritual and health beliefs contribute to micronutrient deficiencies. Firstly, it will be immediately obvious to most that this statement is very ideologically leading at best. And a good way to dissect the ideological position that it presents is to look at the lexical choices. For example, the phrase dictated by is used rather than say resulting from. And this gives the impression that the dietary choices in question are the result of strict, which is its itself connotatively linked to fanatical, adherence to beliefs. Similarly, the use of the term beliefs itself is incredibly significant, especially when contrasted with the term knowledge. Beliefs do not have to be evidence-based, and so it's implied that the followers of the diets in question are acting without evidence, hence further implying that their actions are illogical. Furthermore, the term fear which is used is obviously associated with primitivism and irrationality. There is, however, an acknowledgement of the fact that such dietary choices are made due to health concerns, but there is a simultaneous discrediting of the idea through its amalgamation with the notion of alleged spiritual motivations. Spiritual beliefs being the semantic dichotomy of scientific knowledge. Finally, the reference to affluence is arguably suggestive of the idea that these diets are only followed by those privileged with the luxury of being able to follow otherwise unworkable lifestyles due to narcissism, lifestyles that would be inaccessible to wider society. There is precedent for this in other areas, with attempts having been made to discredit organic agriculture on similar grounds. New York Times journalist Roger Cohen described the preference for organic food as the romantic back to nature obsession of an upper middle class able to afford it and oblivious in their affluent narcissism to the challenge of feeding a planet. Cohen decrees that reliance on heavily industrialized GM monoculture farming is the only way to feed the world in the coming years, a view at odds with the UN, who more recently published a study suggesting that rather than heavily industrialized GM monocultures, it's local small-scale organic farming which is the only way to feed the world in the coming years. Interestingly, Cohen also claimed that Stanford University researchers found that Organic food was not less likely to be contaminated by dangerous bacteria like E. coli. This despite the researchers' explicit conclusion to the contrary, finding that the risk for isolating bacteria resistant to three or more antibiotics was higher in conventional than in organic chicken and pork. This kind of deliberate misrepresentation of scientific research is relatively commonplace in the opinion section of the online news media outlets, but we're not talking about journalists today, we're talking about the scientists, the researchers themselves, and as you'll see, they're not above such practices either. Let's continue our examination of the importance of Newman et al's lexical choices. So here is ostensibly the same information given by the Kenya study researchers, but I've presented it in a very different way. In countries with broader access to nutritional education, planned vegetarian diets and avoidance of red meat resulting from health knowledge contribute to micronutrient deficiencies. But there's still something very wrong with that sentence, isn't there? So enough semantics, let's look at the more objective lies. Now, as you'd expect, Newman et al 
did include a citation for the source they quoted here to demonstrate that, you know, they didn't make this statement up, that they're representing a previous study. So let's look at the relevant entry in their bibliography, shall we? It turns out they were referring to this research paper. You see, I found the aforementioned quotation to be such a transparent and bizarre attack on vegetarianism, and so at odds with mainstream scientific views that I felt I needed to look into this Dagnelli et al. study. As is the case with the Kenya study, the researchers on the Dagnelli et al. study sought to assess the health impacts of various diets on the development of children. But unlike the Kenya study researchers, the Dagnelli et al. researchers decided to follow children who actually ate the diets in question, rather than just feeding them one conforming meal per day. So the diets the Dagnelli et al. researchers compared were lacto-ovo-vegetarian, macrobiotic, and omnivorous. And surprise, surprise, it turned out that the Dagnelli et al. study found the exact opposite of what the Newman et al. researchers claimed they found. Far from concluding that strict vegetarian diets contribute to micronutrient deficiencies, Dagnelli et al. actually discovered that the lacto-ovo vegetarian type of diets of the ecologically and anthroposophically fed children conformed better to the Dutch recommended dietary allowances than the omnivorous and macrobiotic diets. Huh. So unless we assume that Newman et al. cannot understand the simplest of scientific conclusions when written in black and white by other researchers, then we have to realize that this constitutes a deliberate misrepresentation of previous research. So the original quotation is not only semantically misleading, but once again, patently false. So rather than Newman et al's original in affluent countries, strict vegetarian diets and fear of red meat dictated by spiritual and health beliefs contribute to micronutrient deficiencies, what was actually found was that in countries with broader access to nutritional education, planned vegetarian diets and avoidance of red meat resulting from health knowledge contributed to micronutrient gains. So you may be thinking, how could the Kenya study researchers be so audacious in their lies? The answer is they knew they could get away with it. How many people when reading through a study will look at each reference and read that study too and cross check the conclusions and the information they're in with what's purported in the aforementioned study? I mean, no one has time for this. Few people have the expertise. Uh, those people probably don't have the inclination. The few who do have the inclination will probably come up against a paywall and be put off there. I mean, I'm bringing this to light what is it, like 12 years after the fact, something like that, on an obscure YouTube channel. I mean, let's face it, the deception worked. They got away with it. Thanks for watching, guys. Keep looking for the truth. When in doubt, follow the money. And tune in next time for Veganism Unspun, where things will get...